They do have a timeout. Decide not to use it. Curry, way downtown. Bang! Bang! Oh, what a shot from Curry! Okay, so we've had very limited, very limited action so far. Of course, it's hard to take that much away from one game that we have had. But still, I mean, at the beginning of the season, this is kind of the most important time for you to go through, turn that waiver wire, go look for the best options that you can get, because obviously that's going to be one of the main reasons you have a leg up over the rest of your league is with fantasy basketball. It's a little bit different than what you have with like fantasy football. Whereas if you are a very active owner in basketball, it's of course some variance into it. Of course, you're going to find some luck here or there, but you can actually kind of have a significant edge over the rest of your league. If you just put in that extra work. So yeah, we're going to be consistently talking about waivers throughout the entire season, talking about buy low, sell high players, Make sure you go down there, drop that like, subscribe to the channel. And of course, I'm an idiot. I really should not even be out here making these videos. That's why I have Garrett out here being able to do the heavy lifting for us. That way I don't have to speak too much about something I don't know enough about. So Garrett, how are you doing? And are you ready to dive into some fantasy basketball waiver wire pickups? Yeah, let's dive in. Uh, first, uh, first couple games were awesome. I actually was fortunate enough to go watch the Blazers and the Kings. It was a good game. Um, some good takeaways from uh, all the games. And I think we're ready to kind of see, you know, who will continue their, uh, what they're doing and what they're producing. And these are the guys that you should go get if you need uh, depth or if you just need another piece at a different position. Um, this is for a points league also. So it could differ if we're talking categories, but um, let's just dive right in. First up, I have a rookie who I really like, and I should mention that this is really no and not in a particular order. This is kind of just, guys that I wrote down and what I was watching the games noticed and checked their stats and they performed for fantasy. So first guy is a rookie and he is uh, on Houston. It's Sengun. Um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but he, you know, he, he played limited minutes. He only played 19 minutes, but for a rookie whose minutes are going to be, you know, steadily increasing, which is the hope he did good. You know, he had six rebounds, two assists, three steals. That's always really good to see. He did have some turnovers, but he also had 11 points. Uh, right now in fantasy, he's averaging, I mean, through one game, he's had one game so far, which has had 27.5 fantasy points. And this is a rookie. So we're hoping he's going to get better. And this could be one of those guys that you grab now and he does pretty good. There'll probably be some ups and downs, but towards the end of the season, this guy could be producing. Um, he's a guy that I want on my team, a guy I want on my bench, and he's definitely someone I'm looking at off waivers. So what are the minutes expectations over the next month? Like, is this someone you think that is more of a long-term play or someone that you could actually be like getting an actual impact from right away? I mean, I think he's a rookie who's going to be one of the most consistent minutes wise. He's probably going to be getting, you know, anywhere from 20 minutes a game. And you, you hope that at some point he can overtake the starting spot from, I'm assuming it's Theus. Uh, he's probably going to be starting and would, but if there's an injury, this guy's going to right away start getting 30 minutes a game. And even if there's not a rookie, you're just hoping that he starts, you know, he'll probably start at 20 minutes and then you hope he kind of goes up to 25 minutes by the end of the season, you're hoping he's starting. So he's kind of a short-term play because he can do everything that you need fantasy wise. You can get the boards, you can play a good D so he can produce even in 20 minutes for fantasy, but you're just hoping that he gets that minutes up to 25, 30. And then that's when he'll really be a good play. Yeah. I mean, he, he was drafted in the middle of the first 19 years old. Uh, I've obviously, I think that you could also say this is someone that's going to expand the role as well as we go through the season. So I really like the call. I mean, would you, I, we don't even need to talk about points or category. We already kind of went through and just said, we're going to be talking about points leagues in this video in particular. So let's not even discuss category formats. Sounds good. Let's hop right into the next one. Um, this is going to be Will Barton for Denver. You know, I actually had Will Barton on my team last year and he was pretty hot and cold, but I really liked him. Um, and I still like him, you know, Jamal Murray's out uh, and he looked really good in his first game. I mean, he had 40 total fantasy points coming in with 34 minutes, four, three points, you know, six rebounds, five assists, a steal, 20 points. That's what you want from Will Barton is just to have a little bit of everything with high points. And that's what he did. And um, I think he can keep it up. I really like Will Barton as a player. Um, you know, he's only 8% rostered right now. I'm sure that's going to go up after he just got 40 pan fantasy points. So if he's not uh, taken yet in your league, you need to go to your waivers and grab him. He's going to be a steal this year. I truly believe it. I don't think that this is just a one game coincidence. I think that Will Barton is a talent and I think it's going to hopefully, you know, stay the same. I mean, he's got the minutes and he has the talent. So yeah, I mean, obviously definitely... he's going to have that role with the injury that you have. I mean, I, I know a lot of people like you kind of discussed in the video that we were talking about avoiding some Fords. 
wanted to assume that Michael Porter was going to come out average 26 points a game. But, I mean, maybe that's just not the case. Maybe Barton can obviously not come anything close to what you're going to get from Porter Jr. But off the waiver wire, you're just having a completely different threshold for a player to actually make a difference in your lineup. Yeah, I mean, he's the guy on the second team that they need. Uh, Murray's going to miss most of the season, if not all. I mean, he might come back before playoffs. We don't really know yet. But they're going to lean on Barton for scoring a lot, whether he's starting or whether he's on the second unit. They need him. And, uh, and I, I think he'll produce. I think he has the talent. So he's someone I'm going to grab. Awesome. Let's go to the next guy. Next guy. Um, this is going to be another rookie. And this one's going to be a little bit um, not as safe as Sengun. Um, but this is going to be Chris Duarte. Um, he really, really produced in his first game. He, uh, he had 33 minutes, 27 points, five rebounds, one assist, one steal, one turnover. Got you about 40 fantasy points, which is just insane. Um, and we have to remember here that Chris Levert is out. When Levert comes back, Duarte is probably going to get pushed to the bench and get a little bit less minutes. But until Levert comes back, he's going to probably be this good. Uh, he's a rookie, so don't expect um, the consistency of a vet. But but it, it probably will be a little bit of a roller coaster ride. But I do think that he's a talent. I think he was um, underlooked in the drafts um, by myself included. Uh, and he kind of proved it. He's been proving it preseason. He proved it today. He, uh, yeah, he, he pretty much put the Pacers on his back today, and he really, really, really produced. And I think that he, uh, he should be rostered at least until LeVert gets back. Yeah, and he did have six threes made this game. Of course, you're not going to be expecting that every single game where this would just be, I mean, a completely different player than most people thought he was going to be. But still, I mean, at least knowing that he does have the range, that's probably going to give him minutes at the very least, even if we don't expect the volume to be there from the three-point category on a week-to-week basis. I mean, that's going to get him on the court. If you can just kind of expand the entire team and create the space down low with the range that he has, I mean, six threes doesn't necessarily predict too much going forward from what you're going to have with that category, but maybe it predicts a little bit more with his minutes going forward. Definitely agree. Next up, we're going to move to the Bucks, and this is uh, Pat Connaughton. Um, he did really, really well. He shot really, really well. Eight for 13, uh, four for nine for three, put up uh, 20 points, three rebounds, two assists. He had one steal and he had a block, played 30 minutes. Um, I think that they really need Pat Connaughton off the bench. I mean, I think he's just a solid player. I think that he is going to have around 30 minutes a game. I, th- I, I mean, it just depends, you know, he's the kind of guy that if he's on fire, they're going to play him. Uh, I could even see him getting, you know, 33 minutes in a game if he's really, really on fire. And then if, you know, his shooting's off for the night, he might only get like 20 to 25 minutes. So he's a little bit of a gamble, but if he plays well, I mean, he, he got 35 fantasy points. Um, he's, it's just, he's the kind of guy that it's going to be a little bit more risky. Right. Um, but at 11% rostered, he put up again, 35 fantasy points and he's on a really good team. I like Milwaukee and Milwaukee's going to need his shooting. I think he's in a good spot and I think he will succeed. So he's someone that I actually personally just grabbed in my fantasy team because I need a shooting guard. So shooting guard is a tough position. If you need a shooting guard, he could be your guy. And also they're definitely going to like be pushing the pace of play. Like, you know, they're going to get a lot of plays off per game. So, I mean, if the shot attempts are going to be there, maybe for the entire overall rotation, that even he doesn't necessarily need a ton of minutes to be productive. Totally. Yeah. I, I, he, I mean, he's the kind of guy, he, uh, he can just catch fire, right? Like he can put up 15 points in a quarter easily. Um, I think that he's one of those guys. I don't think he'll do that often. And I think he's going to be hot and cold, but um, he's just a solid player. He plays hard. So I think that he'll be on the floor. I think he'll see his minutes and he's worth a, at least a speculative ad to see if he can keep up this production at a tough position, you know, shooting guards, one of the toughest positions in my opinion, in fantasy there, it's pretty shallow. So definitely worth an ad. Yeah. Next up. And last guy on my list is uh, Patty Mills. You know um, he, he produced, we really don't know what's going on with Kyrie. Kyrie has this whole uh, vaccine vaccination stance, which I'm not going to get into, but it looks like Mills is the one who kind of filled those point guard minutes and he, he did it well. Right. He's a, he's a solid player. He's pretty consistent. I don't think he'll be as consistent as he was, last night every night um i mean he shot seven for 11 field goals and was perfect from beyond the arc he shot seven for seven threes um he had two rebounds two assists and a steal and even a block and he played 29 minutes um he's the kind of guy kind of like Connaughton, that i think where if he's not on fire he'll probably see closer to 25 minutes but at the same time with Kyrie out they might really really need him he might actually become um you know i don't know if he's gonna be uh the starting point guard moving forward, but I think that he has a chance to carve out a pretty 
useful role on this team. Um, and, and that is until, and if Kyrie comes back, right, then Patty Mills is probably going to become irrelevant, but it's not looking good. Like Kyrie does not look like he wants to play basketball right now. Um, so as long as that's in place, Patty Mills is a great pickup. He's a good point guard and he'll, he should produce. I mean, we already kind of talked about this with Milwaukee, but the Nets are another one of those teams that you just kind of want as many players in the rotation as you can possibly get, just knowing how many shots are going to be available. Obviously, KD and James Harden are taking a lot on their own just with the percentage of shots that they have. But overall, it's just an offense that you definitely want pieces of. Yeah, it's going to be high scoring. Um, all their games are going to be high scoring, and um, it's just fun to watch. I mean, they uh, they only put up 104 points. I think that's considered low for the Nets, which is – you know, that's a good place to be, right? You want a team that's putting up uh, in the hundreds every game, and that's what the Nets are going to do. And at this point, it looks like Patty Mills is going to be the the beneficiary to Kyrie Irving being out. So he's a good ad. He's a good ad until uh, we see what happens with Kyrie. Awesome. Well, I think that's all we got. Make sure you all go down there, drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. Feel free to go to the comment section. Tell us how stupid we are. We love reading that hate. And outside of that, I don't really have anything to say. Do you have anything, Garrett? Nope. Uh, thanks for listening and uh, go get you guys.